Welcome once more to Northworthy Sagas and Stories. I'm TK, your host. Please feel free to leave a comment. Smash the like button. Now, there are many stories in the Northern world, but this one concerns a Danish king, one of the most ancient kings of Denmark. And his name was Frodi. King Frodi achieved many great things. However, our story begins when he was at home in his hall on the great island of Zeeland. One morning, there came a rap on the great iron bound doors. The door warden opened it. And he saw there before him a stranger, an old man, tall and noble, using a spear as a staff, wearing a blue cloak wearing a broad-brimmed hat with a patch over one eye. And he introduced himself as Hengikiot, the one with the drooping chin. And this was a phrase a poet might use to describe someone with a long beard. But also, those who know all the stories of the old gods of the North would recognize it as a nickname for Odin the one-eyed Allfather, King of the Gods. And no one had any doubt that that was who the stranger before them was. Thank you, stepped into Frodo's hall and announced that he had a gift for the king. Two great millstones, which would bring wealth and prosperity to the whole kingdom. All Frodo had to do now was use them as a mill produce whatever he wished. And with that, Hengi Kiops, who was really Odin in disguise, turned around and strode out of the hall with the stones behind. And they were huge kerns, great round flat millstones, so large that Frodi quickly found he couldn't use them. Try as he might, he couldn't find a beast or a man in the whole of Denmark, who could move those millstones. And for a while, they lay idle. However, the following summer, Frodi paid a visit to a good friend of his, the King of Sweden, up in Uppsala, the royal town of the Swedes. And while he was there, he drank well, he feasted. And one day, with his friend, the Swedish King, they went to the slave market. And there, Frodo was struck by two slave girls. Great, tall, strapping lasses with huge, ropey muscles. And he knew there and then that they'd be the ones to make the millstones work for him. And so he purchased them and without further ado, took them back home to Denmark. And he put the millstones in a great box made out of wood, bound around with iron. And the two girls, whose names were Finia and Minia, they were immediately set to it, pushing the stones for all they were worth. And they did so virtually all day and all night. The only rest that Frodi allowed them was the same time it takes for a song to be sung or for a cuckoo to fall silent. Hardly any time at all. Now the girls did as they were told. They ground those millstones that had the magical property of producing anything that its owner wished for. And King Frodi had commanded that it grind out wealth and prosperity as Odin had promised. And so, as the stones ground together and the girls sweated, strained and heaved, a great peace fell across the whole of the Danish land. Everyone prospered, merchants did more business, fields, well, the farmers had never seen such crops or such fine animals. Everyone had more silver in their purses. For a long time, a gold ring lay on a heath, undisturbed. Not a thief or a robber touched it. And so the people of Denmark were happy. But for the girls, their toil hardly ceased. And after a while, they began to chant the words of a poem, a 
poem called Grotus Song. But that was the name of the mill, Groti. And because it was a wishing mill, the stones gave the words of the poem power. Each verse, every stanza became magical. And the girls began to sing of their birth. So long ago now, they'd almost forgotten it. And this is where King Frodi had made his mistake, because he'd never inquired about the girl's ancestry. And as all people know, this is something any wise person does when meeting someone for the first time. If you ask about someone's lineage, inquire as to who their ancestors were, you can quickly determine whether they're an ally or a source of danger. And as the girls chanted, they spoke of their own birth far underground, being born into the family of ancient giants, who the gods knew well. And they also spoke of the quarrying of the magic millstones of Grotti, the wishing mill, torn from the very bones of the earth. They were there when the stones were pulled free, and their fates had forever been bound up with them. And now the girls remembered who they were. They chanted and they sang of how once they were great warriors in the forefront of battle. Time after time, where shield walls shook, they took on champions and berserkers wrapped in the skins of wolves and bears. We raised one king up, we cast another down, the girls said. We once knew triumph and glory. Now we're stuck here, grinding out peace and prosperity for King Frodi. It's boring here in the hall of the Danish king. And the girls grow angry and they ground harder and harder. And as they did so, they wished for a fleet to come and attack Frodi and give them freedom. And they pushed and they pushed the stones ground together so hard that the wooden box that they were housed in burst apart in a shower of timber. And in the night, a sea king came, a warlord named Mysing, with scores of dragon proud ships. He landed there on the strand of Zeeland, and there it was, King Frodi met him with the best of his Danish warriors. The fight was long and hard, but at last, when the lifeblood of many men ebbed into the earth, King Frodi was slain. Mysing was the victor, and now he pillaged Frodi's kingdom. The best there was in Denmark was now his. And also, he took with him the two girls, Finia and Minia, and the magic millstones of which he'd heard. And they were there in Mysing's ship, having set off from Denmark on his way home to one of the many kingdoms of the North Way, or Norway as it's known. And Mysing was impatient to watch the magic of the wishing mill in action. He said to the girls, I want you to grind something out for me. I am anxious to see this mill work. What do you wish for, my Lord Mysing? He thought about this, and gold was all very well, and silver, and weapons and armour. But there are some things that can also be valuable. And of course, in the preparation of food, and also the preservation of it, Salt is precious to everyone in the northern world. That's what I want, he said to the girls. Salt, grind it out for me. And the girls did as they were told. And soon the salt started to appear, spraying out between the rotating stones. They kept on grind grinding. The salt kept coming. And presently, they turned to Mysing and asked if this was sufficient. Oh, don't bother me now, he said. I'm tired. I've just conquered the Danish kingdom. 
I need to rest. Uh, do as you're told. I'll speak to you later. And so the girls continued. And very soon, Mising's ship and all the others in his great fleet were so full of salt that they began to sink. And where they sank, a huge churning whirlpool formed. The Maelstrom which has given its name to whirlpools ever since that time. And to this day, the girls are still there, down on the sea floor, amongst the remains of Mising's fleet and the dead skeletons of him and his crew. But they're still alive and doing as they were told, grinding out salt. And they will forevermore, because there is no one there to tell them to stop. And that is why the sea is salt. And that's the end of the story. Thank you very much for listening. And um, please click on the notification bell. Thank you.